Imagine a world where you could be locked in a cage just for your opinion. An opinion, mind you, that doesn't hurt anyone physically, but just maybe upset someone. Imagine you post something on social media and you think it's a little bit funny. You post an Instagram story, you reckon, oh, that's pretty funny. Or you retweet something on Twitter and you think, oh, that's a bit funny. Nothing violent. It might be a political statement, but nothing actually violent. Imagine you press share and it goes out into the modern day town square that is social media and you have police come to your house, they lock you up and take you away. Well, we don't have to imagine that world because that's our fucking world right now. G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name's Isaac Butterfield. G'day you good motherfuckers, how you doing? The butts man here. But before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, on the topic of people trying to stop you doing things, you need someone on your side. And ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly who is sponsoring this video. The great people at Surfshark VPN. Safety and security are two very important aspects of daily internet life. Did you know that every single day there's thousands of little soy boys trying to find your credit card information, they're trying to take your bloody ID? It's all happening. And if only there was someone out there to save your bacon. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, there is, and their name is Surfshark VPN. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and they've got your back ladies and gents. Particularly in Australia right now with the new data surveillance laws that have recently been rushed through parliament. Meaning that the government can collect all the data from your device. But it doesn't stop there. Do you know what geo-blocking is? Disney Plus or Netflix, for example, have different movies for each country. That's ridiculous. Access shouldn't be tied to nationality. And with Surfshark, access is granted. I use Surfshark every single day. It starts up automatically when I start up my computer. I absolutely adore it. I wouldn't live life without it. And ladies and gentlemen, I reckon you should sign up as well. Use the promo code BUTSMAN to get 83% off and three months for free. That is absolutely ridiculous. Plus Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk. Surf by your own set of rules ladies and gentlemen and download Surfshark VPN today. Now back to the video. <laughs> ladies and gents this video is all kinds of fucked up. And I mean all kinds because I don't necessarily agree with what the dude actually posted but I do not agree with him being arrested for it. We saw this shit in Australia when the lockdowns were happening and that pregnant lady got arrested. She dared to plan a protest and she was locked up because of that. We saw it when the great Count Dankula was arrested because he taught his cute little pug dog to do the Heil Hitler and he was arrested because apparently that was fucking offensive. Like, he, he was trying to prove to his wife that not everything his beautiful little pug dog did was cute. So he fucked around and made it do some Hitler shit. He wanted to test whether or not he could make it do something repugnant. No pun intended. And he was locked up because of this, charged with a fucking hate crime. For fuck's sake, this is not China. And I say it's not China because obviously China, Chinese Communist Party, the big brother's always watching. Shit like this happens. Chinese police detain a man for nine days over a dog meme. These people are watched by their dictators 24 seven, but this is happening all over the globe right now. Oh, Isaac, we're in a very free society, you know, we're in the freest society of all time. Bullshit. Let's go to England for this story, okay? Where a man has been put in cuffs, locked up, held, detained against his will. Why? Because he used social media to make a post and to quote the officers that locked him up, arrested someone for causing someone else anxiety. Because someone has been caused, obviously, anxiety based upon your social media page. What the fuck, England? In what world is slightly upsetting someone, giving them a little bit of anxiety, a fucking crime? Let's have a look at the post itself, okay? I don't even know if I can fucking post it on here. I, I don't know if I should, but moment, army veteran is arrested for causing anxiety, quotes, uh, after retweeting, retweeting a meme of a swastika made out of pride flags. So, okay, so he retweeted a swastika, which is the Nazi party symbol made out of pride flags. At the start of the year, I saw a car at the front of a show that I was doing in Melbourne that had what I thought was a swastika on it, but it wasn't a swastika because it wasn't turned sideways. It was like, like, like it was straight up and down, like it was fucking nice and level, uh, which apparently is the original, uh, I'm not sure if it's a Buddhist or, or Sikh symbol of peace and love and all that type of shit. Uh, 
I, I, you know, I know it's a very old religion, it's an old symbol, but can you pick a new one? Anyway, I posted on Facebook blowing up and people just had the shits with me because I don't understand, you know, ancient religions. Well, fucking, I'm sorry. This is the moment an army veteran was arrested by police for causing anxiety after retweeting a picture of a swash sticker made out of pride flags on social media. Darren Brady, 51, has slammed Hampshire police for impeding his right to free speech after he was placed into handcuffs on Friday at his home in Aldershot for sharing a meme. I understand why people are upset at swash stickers. They are a representation of the most evil and vile group in, well, recent memory. There's been a lot of horrible people in in history, so I won't say in history, but they're fucking up there. I, like most people, as I said, hate this fucking symbol. If my neighbor put it up next door, I would have the shit. It, it represents a gruesome, horrible group of people committing genocide, horrible murders, and just awful, awfulness. Just supreme, evil, awful people. But we aren't really talking about the evil side of genocide and all that type of stuff and the, the atrocities committed by Hitler's regime in, in World War II. We're talking about the introduction of the pride flag to make it look like the Nazi symbol. The image Mr. Brady retweeted was of a swash sticker that had been digitally manipulated. Oh, Jesus. And was made out of four LGBT pride flags. Okay, so why? Why? That's the question. What is his reasoning for retweeting that? Or what is the reasoning for the first person tweeting that? Where does this image come from? Why does it exist? And what statement is it trying to make? Let's find that out. I had to go down a rabbit hole to work this out, but it was originally posted by an actor called Lawrence Fox. Now I have no idea who he is, but he's been in a few different shows here and there. On Monday, the 44 year old actor turned campaigner Fox left many disappointed and angry as he changed his profile picture to a swastika made out of four pride flags, which reflected his belief that LGBT Pride Month is enforced with a sense of hectoring authoritarianism. So let's break down that quote. Pride Month is enforced with a sense of hectoring. Now that's a very important word there, meaning uh, f you know pressuring or bullying or, or or making someone believe something a certain way. Hectoring authoritarianism. Authoritarianism uh, meaning strict obedience to authority at the expense of personal freedom. So I assume he means that Pride Month to him is enforced in a way that you are not allowed to think any differently of it or of its values. Otherwise, you're basically cancelled. Fox also said in Nazi Germany, before they massacred the Jews, they used to celebrate pride too. Pride in a flag that didn't represent the views of the German people. If you stand for equality for gay people, I stand beside you. If you stand for child genital mutilation, I'm against you. Okay, I assume he's talking about trans kids here. And that's a fair point. You're allowed to be against that. You're allowed to be against having genitals of a child removed because they believe they're a different sex. And this is sort of forced upon people as the general view that it should be okay for kids to take life-changing sex hormone or cross-sex hormone drugs and remove certain parts of their body to make them feel better. And if you are against that prevailing view that this is okay and this is great, then you are shouted down. Now I'm one of these people that think that shouldn't happen. You shouldn't make decisions as a child that are going to affect you for the rest of your days and so negatively affect you. I, I think personally, and you, you can agree with me or disagree with me, I think no transgender people should ever have bottom surgery. Go for it, top surgery, whatever. But the bottom surgery where they remove the penis, like, dude, that is just, just don't do it. It's from all reports, it is a horrible surgery, a tough recovery, fails a lot. Like, I know that it may, may, may make you feel better, but I just don't think it's worth the risk. Just hide your dick. Christ. I mean, I don't know. I know I'm not being very sensitive here, but apparently it's a really tough surgery. So if you're thinking about it, maybe don't do it. I don't know. Don't get me wrong, obviously, trans people should be loved, they should be valued, and they should be respected. And the same goes for the kids. They're so young, and they're so vulnerable, and just don't touch them with fucking surgery. The image he used in that tweet, you could use any flags for that. I mean, I get the point he's trying to make. And I don't know if I agree with exactly how he's doing it, and how he's comparing it, but that's his right to do that. Um, obviously he's trying to get a reaction and he did get that. A lot of people disagree with Fox, including a great group called Pink News. Fox then seemed to 
misleadingly compare gender affirming healthcare for trans youth. See how they use gender affirming healthcare rather than gender transitioning, like chopping off dicks and, and changing sex hormones in the body. Gender affirming healthcare, wording and, and optics is very important to genital mutilation. Now that's great reporting, doesn't sound biased at all. So I do agree with Fox to an extent. I don't agree with the way he sort of went about it, but I agree that there is this hectoring authoritarianism around not just Pride Month, but a lot of different things, whether it's vaccines, whether it's Pride Month, whether it's um, trans youth, whether it's uh, where, what you vote politically, whether it's how you eat, how you uh, live your life, whether or not you drive a gas guzzling car. There is a lot of things that people try to hector you with and demand that you must believe a certain way or you're a bad person. There is a lot of this hectoring authoritarianism that happens in day to day society. For me, Pride Month is about respecting people who have sex in different ways than the normal hetero heteros sexual normative of all that type of stuff away. And that's great. And you do you. And you fuck till your fucking ears bleed. Good on you. For some people though, and particularly the far left, they try to bring their views in and that's where it sort of loses it for a lot of people and they go, hey listen, I'm, I'm down for gay people and bi people and lesbian people and trans people and, and, and you know all the other people, the two spirits, all that type of shit, all the LGBTQIA pluses. But please don't cut children's genitals off, all right? And then if you say that, then you're the worst person in the world and you don't accept Pride Month and this is this authoritarianism that you have to play by the rules and forget your own personal thoughts and feelings. You know, as I say that, maybe I am wrong. Uh, to really support Pride Month, you have to believe that gender isn't real. It's a social construct and you can be any gender at any time of the day. You have to believe that men are women and women are men and they can decide to be whatever they are. You should have your child as non-gendered until they can make up their own mind. You have to believe that men can have babies and men can breastfeed or chest feed or father's milk. And if you don't believe that, then you're as bad as Hitler. That is the way of this new woke cult. It's a religion, it's a cult. You have to play by the authoritarian regime or you're not a part of it. But I think genuinely they lost a lot of people when they started having the comparison between the pride flag and the swastika, okay? You, I just feel like you can't compare anything to the swastika without everyone making it about that symbol. So we can have this conversation, and I think we should have this conversation, leave the Nazi shit out of it. Carolyn Russell, who is a member of the Police and Crime Committee in Greater London Authority, wrote on Twitter, I hope the Met Police will look into Lawrence Fox for using pride flags to create Nazi imagery and posting the images on a public platform. This is a hate crime. But there's nuance to what he's saying. He's not actually trying to make it out that all gay people are Nazis. That's not what he's doing at all. I don't agree with the way he did it, but it's freedom of speech. You should be allowed to do that. And it's the same with the, the dudes in Australia recently who play for the Manly Rugby League team and they didn't want to wear the pride rainbow jerseys. I disagree with their reasoning because of religion and shit. I'm not a fan of religion but I agree with their ability to say, hey, that's not me, that's not what I'm about. It's free speech. You have to be willing to take the good with the bad. You have to be willing to be offended and agree with things at the very same time or at the very least in the same conversation because that's what freedom of speech is all about. You should never be locked up. You should never be held in a cage just for sharing a fucking meme. That's crazy. So do I think you should compare the pride flag to the Nazi flag? No. Do I think that all gay people are Hitler? Yes. Yeah, that's a joke. YouTube, chill out. But should we speak openly and honestly about what we believe, even if we are a straight person and we have an opinion about the LGBT community? Absolutely. Speak your mind, freedom of speech above all else. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker, peace in the Middle East, be dick sticks. Don't share any memes. Toodaloo, off, bye bye. Let that out.